In this video, we're going to cover a concept called scaling. Um, scaling um, can work two ways. So, and we're going to use this example. This is a simple uh, high pass filter we've designed here. It's relatively simple. It's got a one ohm resistor, one farad uh, uh, in a capacitor, and one ohm, um, <clears throat> one ohm resistor here at the feedback level. Now, if you do find out what the cutoff frequency for this filter is, well, it's 1 over R1C. It's 1 ohm times 1 farad, which means it's 1 rad 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 radians per second. That's great. <clears throat> so we've got this. Now, let's say we want to scale its component. For example, instead of having a capacitor that is 1 microfarad, maybe we want a capacitor that is 1 microfarad. So now the question is, how do we go about scaling? There is a concept called um, um, component scaling factor. And we typically use K of C to refer to this. This basically says as long as you keep these ratios, you will not change the behavior of your filter, the cutoff frequency, and things like that. So as long as you make sure that the ratio of R prime over R is the same as ratio of L prime over L, as the ratio of C, notice that this is a reverse order, C over C prime, then your circuit behavior for will not change. Let's go ahead and apply this concept to the circuit. We want our C to go from one microfarad to one uh, from one farad to one microfarad which means basically I'm going to plug the components in I want this used to be one farad now I want it to be one micro farad that basically tells us that uh, the KC the, the component scaling factor needs to be 10 to the 6 so if in, in this case, we don't have inductors. If you were doing passive filter, of course, inductors would be important. But in this case, we really don't need it right now. But that means if, if I want to hold this and make sure all of this equation is correct, then I have to make sure that R prime over R is also equal to 10 to the 6. Both are R1 and our R2 is 1 ohm. So we plug 1 ohm in here which means the new resistor, if you want to keep the characteristic the same, the new resistor has to be one mega ohm or 10 to the six ohm. So in other words, so once we have, once we have a component factor scaling, our new filter needs to have a resistor here, capacitor, so the, the component locations are of course not changing because we're still trying to do a high pass filter. But this has to be 1 mega ohm, R2. R1 has to be 1 mega ohm. And our C, of course, is 1 microfarad. So we accomplished what we set out to do to use a 1 microfarad capacitor instead of a 1 farad capacitor. But notice that when I go back to calculate omega C, the new omega C is going to be 1 over R1 prime. These are all primes, the new values times C prime. And as you notice, that's going to be one mega ohm multiplied by one microfarad. We still got one radian per second as our cutoff frequency. So nothing has changed. That's great. Now let's say we've got this filter, but now we've decided that we really would like to change this filter uh, such that we have in this new filter we want to have a omega C that is no longer one rad, but let's say is 2,500 radian per second. Of course, we can go back to the beginning and redesign the whole filter from grounds up, or we can take this filter and use a concept called frequency scaling factor to do the conversion of this filter to this new filter we're looking for, which we're gonna say, okay, we'll show the frequency factor, uh, scaling factor as K of F. K of F has to, R will have no impact on 
uh, frequency filter uh, scaling. But the new, if we show the new one with double prime, just to make sure to differentiate from the other two frequencies. So our new frequency double prime C over our old frequency must be equal to um, old inductor, which we don't have any, over new inductor, and the old capacitor over the new capacitor. So, so let's uh, take a look at it. We know some of the information. So if you go back and let me get a different color just to make sure we are staying. We know that the old frequency was one. The new frequency we want to be 2500. Oh. And um, we know that the, we, we, don't, we are not using inductors so we don't have to worry about the old and the new. And over here we have um, we have the um, old capacitor is one microfarad. We are not sure what the new capacitor should be, uh, but for one thing we know from from this ratio, we know that K of F, the frequency scaling factor, is 2500. That's fine. That means that one microfarad over the new has to be equal to 25. Hundred microfarad. I'm sorry, 2,500. There's no units for that thing, which means the new capacitor we put in here has to be um, basically one over 2,500 microfarad. That's great. So now we have the resistor doesn't change. When you do frequency scaling, you can leave the resistor around alone. So what happens is that with the newly scaled, we'll have the resistor here, the resistor is still 10 to the 6 ohm. Capacitor now is 1 over 2500 microfarad. And then the resistor, R, this was R1. This um, is R1 double prime, if you want to call it that, or C double prime, just to distinguish them. And then R2 double prime is 10 to the 6 ohms. And so this is the new filter. Let's double check just to uh, see if we indeed change the new frequency, cutoff frequency to 2500 uh, rate per second like as we expected. Um, so we know that omega C for this filter is one over R1 times C double prime. So that's gonna be R1 is 10 to the six times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 2500 and that is indeed 2500 radian per second so just just to uh, recap what we did we said anytime you got a filter and you want to change the component value you can take advantage of this quantity which basically says the new resistor over the old resistor must be equal to the new inductor over the old inductor must be equal to the old capacitor over the new capacitor. That's one thing, the capacitor reverse in this case. And as long as those all those relationships hold and they're all equal to Kc, you've got your scaling done and you're not changing the behavior, you're just changing the component. The other thing sometimes you want to do, you want to keep, you not really don't care what the components are, but rather you want your cutoff frequency to move to a different location. And in that case, you use frequency scaling to do that. By the way, both of these are applicable to passive filter as well as the active filter. Now let's go ahead and uh, as, a, as a summary, let's, let me go ahead and give you a relationships that allow you to both simultaneously both do frequency scaling, which the scale is KC, uh, I'm sorry, KF, and and component, do them both at the same time, component scaling K of C. We'll assume you know what your K of C and your K of F is. And if you know that, then as long as this relationship holds, you can do both of them at the same time. So R prime, the new R should be KC times the old R. 
new inductor should be the ratio of KC, the component scaling, over the frequency scaling times L. And the new capacitor has to be the old capacitor divided by KC times L. Okay, so this, this will do both of them at the same time if you know what your KC and your KF is. And <clears throat> KC, is, as you know, is the ratio of the um, you know, new resistor over old resistor, new inductor over old inductor, or old capacitor over new capacitor, and KF is the new frequency over the old frequency. But you can do them simultaneously using this. All right? So, so that's, uh, that's uh, called scaling. Uh, filter elements and frequency. Uh, it applies both to passive filter as well as active filters.